Hey, this is Jana from Pearl Together. Hey, welcome to our fingerless mitt knit along. Um, the pattern that I'm going to be working on is called the Hedgerow Mitt, so I'll put the link down below. And what I'm really excited about is it's a it's a fingerless mitt. So I'm going to, you know, usually those stop about right here, I think. I'm going to make mine a little bit longer, but I'm not actually going to close it off and make a mitten out of it, although you could. You would just simply keep knitting and round it off um, in the same way you would the sock, you know, when we did our sock, sock tutorial before. Um, I, the reason I'm not going to do that, I want fingerless mitts, is so that if I, I'm going to knit mine long, and then I can always turn down the cuffs if I want to, to make them shorter for the day, or if I have to, you know, mess with my phone or text, or more likely for me, I'm unlocking a, a carabiner clip on a gate on our farm, or, or whatever. But the point is you have your fingers free. Um, the other thing is I've started walking a lot lately uh, for weight loss and, and, you know, just better heart health and fitness. And so I've noticed my hands start to get hot. You know, I'm going along and I'm doing my thing. And if I had mittens, I think my hands would get too sweaty or hot. So I'm kind of excited about the fingerless mitts that are open on the top so that I can... I can tuck my hands in and kind of pull them over if I'm when I'm first starting out and it's chilly, um, or I can open them up and turn them down if I need a little more breathability on my hands. So I'm excited. I'm going to customize the pattern a little bit for my purpose. Um, you can feel free to do the same. Uh, feel free to post in the Facebook group about the pattern you've chosen. If it's a different one that I'm doing, that's totally fine. I'll help you as much as I can. There's other experienced knitters in the group as well that can help you if you get hung up um, if you're doing something complicated. So as always, uh, we'll purl together. We'll get through the hard parts and enjoy these cruising along Netflix knitting, the easy parts. So, all right, let's get started. All right, we're casting on for the Hedro fingerless mitts. I'll put a link to the pattern down below. Um, I'll also put a link to the uh, video about how to do a long tail cast on. Um, just click on the little eye in the upper right hand corner of the screen and also another link for joining in the round if you haven't done that before. Um, and the magic loop method, which is simply where we're going to knit each half of the mitt, the front and back, using one long circular needle um, that just loops around on one side and then it loops around on this other side creating a, a figure eight or what's known in the knitting community as a magic loop. It's really nothing magic about it, but it was pretty clever for whoever first thought, thought of that. So I've done my cast on and I'm joined in the round. So I'm just going to begin um, with the first portion of the pattern here, which I will also link down below. Um, where it's a free pattern on Ravelry and I'll post my project page there as well. Um, I'm using fingering weight sock yarn that's kind of a variegated tonal sort of a chocolate brown color. I'm kind of digging that. Um, I've had this in my stash for a really long time so I, I'm happy to have a project that I think will go well with it. I just ran across it. I kind of forgot I had it actually. Uh, the yarn, the label for the skein is long gone but I'm pretty sure I remember um, what it was. So. It's just a fingering weight sock yarn, and I like the color, so I'll go ahead with that. Okay, so we're casting on um, 60 stitches, and then the pattern says to divide it into uh, four equal sections on double-pointed needles, but again, I, I prefer the magic loop method. You can do double points or two circulars, whatever, whatever you choose. So we're going to start the cuff ribbing, which is um, knit four, purl two, and we're going to go all the way around in that way. And because knit four purl two is a six stitch repeat, that will work out just fine to divide my stitches in half. So each half of my needle will have 30 stitches on it. So obviously I'll come out at the end of my six stitch repeat at the evenly on each half of the needle. So I won't be starting my second needle on a purl stitch. So normally I don't knit this slow, but um, you know, I'm working around the tripod here, and also I'm always really careful on my first cast on row not to split any stitches or make any mistakes in the foundation of it all. So, so this is knit four, purl two, 
And again, if you're just learning and need to do a refresher about the knit stitch and the purl stitch, well, I have um, on this playlist, you can find videos for that as well. So we're just carry on with this knit four purl two ribbing. Um, the pattern says, I think for like an inch, um, you know, this is the cuff of your mitt. So you can go an inch, inch and a half, three quarters of an inch, kind of decide what makes you happy about that. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of picky about these things. I like to end on an even row. So if an inch turns out to be, you know, 11 rows tall, I'll do another one just so it's 12, just because I'm picky like that. If it ends up being 13, I'll probably go to 16. And then I always write down, you know, make sure you keep pattern notes, write down on your paper what you did so you can make sure to make the second one match. Um, rather than just measuring, I like to write down how many rows I've done um, just so I make sure my second mitt will match the first. So, okay, carry on with your with your knit for purl two ribbing um, for how whatever thickness of cuff you like to have. And then we'll be back and start the ribbed stitch pattern that's going to make the hedgerow, so to speak. Okay, we've knitted, I've knitted 16 rows around. Um, that might be different for you depending on what your preference is for your gauge. Um, now we're going to go ahead and start the next section on the pattern, which is the ribbed stitch pattern, which is also a multiple of six. Um, now for rows one and two, we're going to knit two then start the textured part, which is going to end up being a purl, knit one, and then purl two. And you'll notice that as you go through this and you repeat that six stitch sequence, your purl columns here are going to remain the same. So that'll line up and provide some stability and consistency to the pattern despite the alternating of the purl one knit one as we go. So again, we're going to knit two, bring the yarn to front so you can purl, and then go back and knit one and purl two. Okay, so we're going to carry on with this sequence. Um, that's round one and two. And the next round, you'll notice these Rounds three and four, pardon me, not in the next round. You'll notice your purl columns are always going to stay the same. What's going to change in here is the placement of this single purl and the single knit. Those are going to swap. So you'll notice that and how how it all how your the sequence of stitches kind of stacks together. But what I like about this pattern is that you still have the consistency of the purl column, even though the center of this ribbing is going to end up being textured, kind of a seed stitch texturing. So we're going to do that and we're going to knit that up to the base of the hand. So you're going to knit that as long as you want the arm of your fingerless mitt to be. I've already started my second one here and I just have it on a couple of uh, DPNs or double pointed needles just, just as a holder. But I, I wanted to knit it a little bit further so you can see the texture that that creates. See, this is the regular 4x2 knitting down here and then you can see where it switches and it makes that, that texture. So I really like how that's turning out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and knit this up to the length of the arm section that I want it to be. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So when we're ready to begin the section that is the base of the hand where we start increasing the number of stitches so it goes around the, the widest part of your hand, I'll have both of my mitts at the same point. So you can do that too, if, certainly, if you have enough needles. If not, just do one at a time with me. Um, I'm going to carry on knitting this, and I'll upload another video for you in a couple of days when I get to the next section. So as always, uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions, or feel free to join us on our Facebook group. I'll put the link to that. And um, okay, knit on. Have a good week, and show us your progress in the group if you like. All right, thanks for watching.